We're working on a 2005 Hyundai Santa Fe with an interesting issue. You start it up, it'll run just fine for a few minutes, and then it'll just die, stall out. You can turn the key off, turn the ignition back on, it'll have a long crank time, but then it'll start right back up, and it won't fail again. They can drive it around all you want, it won't have any issues until it sits again for a little while, and then the same thing happens. Sometimes the check engine light will be tripped, sometimes it won't. So let's dig into this, see what we can find. I went ahead and pulled codes. We see we have a code in the engine control module for a P0335. That's a crank position sensor uh, range performance, which makes sense with the symptoms that we have. When the engine computer loses its ability to know where the crank position is, it just turns everything off. It says, hey, I don't know where I am, so I'm just going to shut down the fuel. I'm going to shut down the ignition just as a safety because it, it doesn't know when it's injecting. It doesn't know when it's igniting because it doesn't know where that crank is. So now we have a fault code. We know what system to tackle. It's an input system for the computer, the crank position sensor. When the computer looks at different sensors for input, then it knows how to output things like the fuel injection, the ignition, it looks for the cam position sensor and the crank position sensor to know where it is in its rotation. The crank has two rotations for every one cam rotation. So up, top dead center, down, bottom, back up, back down. That's, that's a full four stroke cycle. But when it's on top dead center, how does the engine know that it's top dead center compression stroke versus top dead center exhaust stroke. Well, that's a cam crank correlation. It knows where the crank is because of its tone wheel, and it compares that where the cam is in its tone wheel. So I think just for this video, because this is a really uh, simple diagnostics, so I'm gonna go ahead, uh, hook up a lab scope so you can see uh, what's happening, what the engine computer is looking at, uh, explain it uh, real quick, and then we'll tackle the sensor itself uh, how do we diagnose a bad crank sensor, um, especially an intermittent one? So let's uh, pull out the scope, get it all set up, and we can show you. All right, so let me show you what we're hooked up to. We have uh, number one hooked up to our number one uh, ignition. This will just give us an ignition trigger. Number two, channel two is set to the fuel injector. So then we'll get to see our injection pulse. Channel three, is hooked up to our cam position sensor. And on these, if you look at the thermostat housing, it's that connector right above it. So we're back probed into that. I didn't want to unplug anything, uh, if at all possible. The crank sensor is a little harder to get to. Let me see if I can show you where that is. So you see my blue lead there, and it's under, uh, under this thing. Let me see if I can move it. I don't know if you can see the, the back of that connector there. But that's where it is. Um, let me get my hand out. Let's see if I can show you like a better reference. So it's going to be under this uh, ignition coil and then under that hose. So you got three ignition coils, one, two, three. It's the further uh, front one underneath. Anyway, so that's where all the sensors are and that's what we have plugged in. So number one is ignition, two is fuel, cam, and then four is crank. Let's uh, fire up this beast and get a waveform and just wait for it to die. There we go, we saw it died. I'm gonna stop recording. So let's analyze this real quick. So I made a little drawing here just to illustrate what's happening, how a cam sensor or crank sensor uh, works. So that's the sensor, whether it's a cam or a crank, it doesn't matter. And this is either the tone wheel or reluctor. I've heard it both ways. Um, maybe one's right, the other's wrong. I'm not really sure. I've heard it referred to as both. Either way, the whole purpose of this gear is it has teeth. And as those teeth rotate, 
and pass by the sensor, the sensor uh, makes a voltage or pulls up or pulls down depending on the system. But either way, it makes a waveform like this. This sensor is a Hall effect sensor. So it'll have three wires. It'll have a, a positive, a negative, and a signal. So this produces a digital uh, signal square wave. There are other sensors that produce a sine wave like this, an analog signal. And the computer has to convert this analog signal into a digital signal. Either way, uh, whether the sensor itself converts it to digital, like we have with the Hall effect sensor, it itself produces a digital signal. So inside uh, the sensor has uh, a little chip on it and it's little wiring and it's little stuff inside that converts it right there on uh, the sensor. Whereas a sine wave, the engine computer, the ECM has to have a little computer chip inside to convert the sine wave into a digital uh, a wave. So that's how it works. As this wheel rotates, it makes one of these teeth pass by the sensor and that changes the voltage state um, produced around that, that sensor. Now, if you notice, let me get a blue color. Down here is a big gap. So these teeth are pretty evenly spaced, but then there's a big gap here. So that's how the engine computer knows where it is in relation. This whole circle is 360 degrees. So it knows that, hey, when I make this big gap, I'm in a certain spot based on my degrees. Let me get another color. I'm running out of colors. So if this is zero degrees right here, the green that I'm drawing is zero degrees, then every time it reaches right here, let's say that's, let's see, 180, I don't know, 150 degrees. So it rotates and it goes, hey, I'm 150 degrees. So, so let me find a little space on the board. So let's draw a piston real quick. And it's on its little crankshaft rotating inside its cylinder. And it's going up and it's going down. And this is rotating. And it also has a circle. It's 360 degrees. This one right here is zero degrees. And that same spot is 150 degrees. So every time it rotates and reaches 150 degrees, that's equal to this uh, empty spot here. And the engine computer knows that. It knows where the piston is in the cylinder based on what the signal is doing. Because again, it'll be a nice even wave, but then we'll miss. And then it'll be a nice even wave, and then we'll miss. So every time it misses, it counts that time. There's a little timer, a little clock inside, and it goes, hey, we're a few milliseconds without a, a bump. So that's our mark. That's our 150 degree mark. So it knows where the piston is uh, in its rotation. Hopefully that's not ridiculously confusing. Um, so the crank sensor is based on the same principle, and so is the cam sensor. Then the engine computer takes those two different signals and matches them together and says, okay, now I know where the cam is, now I know where the crank is, and, and we're, we're good to go with the logistics inside the computer when to fire uh, a spark or when to shoot out some fuel into the cylinder. Uh, either one it knows based on having both those signals. See right here in the waveform is where we start to break up. We lose our injector. Remember the red is the injector. The yellow is our ignition. Well, we have this big gap right here. That's because we lose it. Why are we losing ignition? Why are we losing our injector pulse? And then we kind of get it back here for a couple, but it, it doesn't stick around. So why are we missing it? Well, let's zoom in down here. So here we are zoomed in and you can see again, right here is where we lose everything. We'll notice this chunk right here, what's happening with the green and the blue. That's our cam. Our green is our cam and the blue is our crank. Let me take away the ignition. There we go, ignition and injection is taken away. And you can see, let me get a different color so it's not confusing, I'll get uh, orange. So green is our cam, and you can see our cam making its wave. And if you notice, the blue stops right here. 
But the cam continues. Well, why is the cam continuing? Because the engine's rotating. Remember, the tone wheel, this would be like a circle, and then you have the cam sensor with this little wiring. Anytime that that tooth passes the sensor, it, it makes a, a wave. So it waves up or waves down, whatever uh, it is, it makes that waveform as this is rotating. So the cam is still making a signal because the engine's still rotating. Let me erase this. What we lost with that in mind, what we actually lost is our crank signal. Right here, the crank signal stops. With the cam signal still in place, we know that the engine's still rotating for a couple of turns. Well, if the engine's rotating for a couple of turns, shouldn't our blue continue to make a wave? It should. The fact that we're not getting a signal while the engine's rotating means there's something wrong with that crank sensor. It's falling out. All right, that's some theory and operation and the analysis of the waveform that we captured with the scope. So how can we test the sensor to either double confirm or let's say we don't have a scope and we want to attack uh, the sensor because we do have a check engine light code. So we do know uh, there's an issue with the crank position sensor or circuit. So how can we test the sensor itself? So let's open the hood, uh, head back under and do some testing. All right, so I broke a major rule in intermittent issues and that's unplugging it. That's the only way I could get to doing what I need to do. So it's unplugged right now. I have a test light hooked up. We're gonna check powers and grounds. This is Hall Effect sensor, so it has three wires, power, ground, and a signal. It's a 12 volt power, but a five volt square wave. So within the sensor, it does what it needs to do to make it a five volt uh, square wave, but it is a 12 volt power source. So, ignition on, this should light up nice and bright. All right, there we go, key is in the ignition. Uh, for your reference, power and ground are the two end wires, the signal wires in the middle. So the two end wires, I don't know which one's power, which one's ground at the moment, but it doesn't matter. When you're hooking up a test light, they could be swapped and the bulb will still light up. So, power and ground, check, done. Um, what we can do is wiggle the harness around, try to get it to to blip out, to lose its its light. That would tell us that we have a integrity issue uh, in the wiring somewhere. If this was really dim or a dull light, then that too might show some resistance uh, in the wiring. Okay, power ground, check, done. Now let's check the signal wire. So in order to check the signal wire, I don't know if you remember on another video I did on a Nissan, I was able to trick the engine computer into thinking that the engine was actually turning when actually it wasn't. And I could do that by way of the signal wire. On this vehicle, you're not able to do that. Um, it's a little different setup. It doesn't allow uh, for that type of diagnosing. The only way you can diagnose or test to see if the signal wire is any good from that connector to the engine computer is to go to the engine computer itself and do a load test. For a load test, you would apply uh, a power to this side and then go to the engine computer, of course, unplugged. You want it unplugged from the engine computer. Supply power from the battery or a ground from the battery, either one. On this side, unplugged, of course, go to where the engine computer is on that connector um, see if that power or that ground whichever one you're sending uh, is on the other side I imagine it would be because again this is intermittent issue so I imagine uh, it would be but again go through the harness and check for you know wiggle test and make sure that, that light continues to light up that's the only way I can think of to test the signal wire on this particular setup all right, there you go. That is the diagnosis of this crank position sensor code. Having a scope was helpful in capturing the fault as it happened. Right then and there, we saw, hey, our crank position sensor is dropping out. And where we probed that sensor, it couldn't be any of the wiring because we probed right there at the connector. 
if we were probing back at the uh, engine uh, control module, the engine computer, then it may be a wire in between, but we didn't. We probed right there at the center, so it could only be uh, the center at that point. Having a scope is nice, but in this particular case, uh, not absolutely necessary because we still had a code, uh, a check engine light code that pointed us towards that sensor. So then we could just do the checks on the sensor itself uh, and conclude, hey, our powers, our grounds, our signal uh, is all good. So it has to be uh, the sensor itself. So a couple different ways to tackle this. If for some reason you did not have a code, but this intermittent fallout was happening, then having a scope would be um, the way to go and finding it because it's so intermittent. All right, well, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it was uh, educational, entertain, entertaining in some way. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. See you on the next one. I just wanted to show you real quick where the sensor is. See if you could see it right there. There's a sensor. I got the new one in. It's just held by one 10 millimeter bolt. So under the vehicle, you can see the oil filter right here, the exhaust. Do this when it's cold because you have to be around the exhaust a lot. For the starter motor, there is a heat shield. So unbolt the heat shield. There's just three bolts in it. Lower it down. Uh, it doesn't come out really because of the exhaust, but it doesn't have to. You lower it down enough and then that gives you perfect access uh, for your hand. Now it's a little, you know, a little challenging. You gotta maneuver yourself in there, but it's not the worst. So about, you know, 15 minutes, you can have it replaced.